So we have the next panel with the, uh, us, uh, where uh, Ms. Siji and uh, Mr. Sharik would be doing the inciting through uh, patient videos on the uh, gynecology segment. Let me quickly uh, introduce them all. Most of them do not need any introduction, but it's my it's a formality that I have to do. Uh, in the gynec panel, we have Ms. Um, C.G. Nair Call, a pharma professional with 25 plus years of experience in sales and marketing. She currently heads marketing for women's health division of Bayer Zydus Pharma, a science graduate from Devi Ahilya University, Indore, and has completed executive business management from IM Calcutta. She loves nature and is passionate about life, art, and inner practices. She is purpose-driven and um, goal-oriented pharmaceutical marketing champion with a credible track record of conceptualizing, developing, and delivering marketing strategies and plans. Welcome, CG. Thank you so much, Swati. And uh, we also have with us Mr. Shari Khan, Senior Vice President, RX Laboratories, India Formulation Business a distinguished pharma industry business leader with more than 22 years of corporate pharma sales and marketing experience. His corporate journey began in sales and has risen from various ranks in sales and marketing. He has been part of various organizations like Lupin, Alembic, Oneberry, RX Laboratories. Currently, he is heading the domestic formulation functions of sales, marketing, business development, distribution, new product development and HR also. Welcome, Mr. Shari. Thank you so much, Dr. Swati. Uh, Zena, stay with us and uh, let us have a look at the videos first. Uh, we'll play two videos. In almost all segments, we had four videos sent to the panelists. So they have more insights than the videos that you, we are going to uh, show you today. Uh, uh, the first video would be of seven minutes. The second would be of 11 minutes. So stay with us, listen. Uh, let's develop the art of listening today uh, to the patients through these uh, 20 minutes of videos. Uh, so uh, the first question is when you realize that PCOS has no one shot cure but can only be managed, how did you feel? So uh, at the initial stage, I was just worried about the symptoms and how I can uh, cure the symptoms because I was gaining weight very uh, rapidly and I could see facial hair also uh, quite a lot. I had to go to the parlor uh, twice a month to uh, get my eyebrows done. So, <laughs> so uh, there were a lot of problems that I was seeing and especially the anxiety issues were increasing uh, rapidly. So I wanted to cure the symptoms initially and that was my main aim and um, so yeah and uh, the next next question is uh, you are aware that this problem can improve or deteriorate every month how prepared are you to handle this state of mind uh, so I am a bit prepared because uh, I've been uh, experiencing the symptoms uh, since like three to four years now and I understand more of most of the symptoms and how I can deal with them um, by eating better or exercising uh, for a regular 40-45 minutes. I, man I try to manage all the symptoms but at the same time there are times when I do not understand how, uh, how the uh, disorder is working or how um, you know I can improve on my condition because even after uh, following all the uh, all the all the things that I need to do eating good exercising even after that at times uh, the the uh, symptoms do not go off and at that point of time I, I I am quite confused how to deal with it so that is a problem that still exists especially uh, uh, I get very worried because uh, I, I genetically have this uh, condition that my grandmother, my mother, everyone was, uh, everyone is little on the um, uh, heavy, heavier side. So I have, an, you know, I get worried about that as well. Also, so the next question is, how does the weight, skin and stress issues affect you? So the weight issue does not affect me that much right now. The next is skin. Um, I do not uh, experience any acne. 
but at the same time there is some pigmentation on my skin and uh, i get bothered about that stress level stress levels and anxiety is one of the things which i which uh, i bother i'm bothered about the most so you yeah. and the next question is what is the response of your doctor the people around you about the condition how do you handle such embarrassing moments so uh, talking about the doctors the, uh, the experience has not been that good because uh, maybe they do, they do not understand the situation uh, in in a very good way so uh, they they uh, focus on the symptoms and try to treat uh, you know find out what can be the reason for those symptoms and uh, also i found out that you know some of the uh, nurses in the hospital were you know making fun or laughing so uh, so it's not not it wasn't a very good experience uh, at the same time uh, while talking about the diagnosis so Uh, for diagnosis ultrasound needs to be done which is a very emb- embarrassing process so uh, i would request the companies if they could come up with some other uh, diagnostic uh, you know process that would be wonderful uh, next is family so a uh, family also you know they are uh, pretty supportive but at the same time they just you know throw away all the food that i have <laughs> so no no sugar no carbohydrates so um, that is that is that is quite a lot to take uh, when you know you're a person who you know enjoys eating different types of food so uh, that is a problem also and it becomes quite embarrassing also when you know what you want to eat something and uh, the family is uh, not allowing you to eat it so that is a problem for sure last question can you share how pharma companies can be of help to patients or caregivers or uh, definitely a lot of awareness need to be there i mean uh, there is information on the internet for sure but uh, how to uh, access those access that information is is a question mark right now uh, the doctors uh, also have uh, the awareness but at the same time if a proper um, guided counseling can be there for for uh, people who have PCOS, it would be better. Also, uh, for families, if you know the caregivers or the family, uh, you know if there is a manual or a counseling session, if when they uh, where they are, uh, you know, uh, told how how the process work and um, what type of symptoms can be there in in any person. I mean, uh, like hair growth or obesity can be very, you know, uh, visually. Uh, easily understood but at the same time if there is something like a mood swing or a, a craving for something like carbohydrates or uh, sugars that, that is not something which is visible to visible easily to the uh, caregiver so that is something that needs to be uh, grinded to the people also uh, uh, diet charts or counseling sessions for the pcos people uh, so that they know what to eat and what not to eat and uh, the most important is that uh, you know a different brand or different packaging of uh, drugs for uh, pcos uh, and which is a little uh, separated from the uh, general contraceptives can be there i mean uh, that would be uh, really helpful um, so yeah that's it thank you what sort of symptoms you were experiencing that made you go visit a doctor in the first place firstly uh, i could not get my periods regularly that mm-hmm. was irregular of my periods and overweight and um, like uneasiness feeling like fatigue and all uh, bloating uh, and uh, sometimes the periods will be very like overflow and sometimes uh, the my periods would not be come uh, two months three months four months it could not come also and when it could come no like uh, one week uh, 15 days it could it would be running my uh, like bleeding it, it would be 15 days or mainly the wear, overweight i wa- i used to gain weight 
more because of that uh, irregular of periods okay uh, so that made me to go to doctor and uh, that uh, uneasiness and all like i could not tolerate it no so i uh, considered the uh, doctor gynec were you experiencing a lot of pain or anything while you know uh, your periods were there i used to experience more the stomach ache and back ache and also uh, my stomach used to hurt very very much i could not uh, tolerate it so uh, i consulted the doctor like i gone for the do- i visited the doctor and uh, uh, what was your initial reaction when the doctor explained it to you i what- suddenly like literally i cried off <laughs> i cried off literally i cried off because uh, uh, one of my friend was having a pcod okay and she was she was uh, like i used to see her no she was um, like overweight fully overweight and her, her face was uh, filled with the pimples and all uh, i i would even like i thought that i would become like this also only if i could not take the treatment and i cried it off very much i cried like one hour i cried <laughs> and my mom told that oh, it's okay you can deal with this and with the proper meditation and all, like medications and all i cleared it the pcod like how it hits no like overweight you will be having a overweight uh, and you will be facing more of problem like periods and all uh, and in uh, face also you will get more acne more acne you will get so Mm-hmm. i cried literally i cried and my mom she supported me a lot my family members also here they supported me a lot the uh, like my mom she literally told don't worry you can deal with this and um, and our doctor she recommended the nutritionist uh, so i have gone her and with the medications um, uh, she given a few medications for me and with the proper medications and uh, proper diet proper uh, proper uh, workouts i cured it it's in control totally in control before like i was uh, 70 or 73 kg now i am 50 50 59 50 like variation it will be there but i i will not cross 60 that much <laughs> my weight uh, now i now i can say what my body needs and if one day i could not uh, work out no my uh, body feels very uneasiness and all so it had become a routine now proper diet uh, proper workouts and all earlier before visiting the doctor did you try any uh, you know uh, medication or any remedies yourself or did your family suggested anything like many times there are family members who say that okay it happens um, you know you can just take warm water or take uh, warm water bath no 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 before that i have not tried anything but uh, like few times i gone near ayurvedic doctors no uh, like to treat that uh, but it is it did not work out for me so i directly this time i could not take the risk so i directly gone to gynec- gynecologist did you used to take any sort of uh, uh, pain killers no i could bear it <laughs> i could bear it literally i could bear it because uh, i was knowing as an a medical student i was knowing that what are the side effects of that uh, tablet you know so i could bear it and uh, home remedy i could the uh, warm like warm bag it will be there no hot water bag i could take that but, um, as in academics like my college like to the, when the period was uh, uh, like it would come no like two days i should i i could not go to college only some days i could go some days i could like when it when the pain will be more no i could go i could not go to college like um, two days i could take leave so i can rest in home first three days i could feel more pain and to- last five days i could not feel pain that man because my pc pcod it was in a starting stage like it was like jard rehta hai na mo jard jard tha mera wahi clear kiya kiya 
and uh, uh, can you share Khayatri, how was your family's reaction to it when they found out uh, not just your mother but like fa father or uh, your grandparents if when if they got to know what was their reaction my father <laughs> he was uh, like uh, he he scolded me actually <laughs> eat that burger and all <laughs> like uh, we used to eat very much outside food sir, first of all and then he told me uh, like workout uh, workout you do some exercise you do basic uh, like the main uh, it is no like sedentary lifestyle i used to not work out i used to very lazy lazy person <laughs> now i am totally opposite of it one day I could not, uh, if I not work out, no, my body feels uneasy. So I got to know that and I changed it. And mentally also, like, uh, uh, if we start, uh, like, I started work out, no, now I can clearly concentrate on my studies and all, like, calm mind, like, everything I'm getting now. What to focus on, what to not to focus on, that much. Yes, that is. But that's my family funny. supported me on that journey. Like uh, some days I could uh, feel so much angry on myself. Like uh, the tablets are uh, so much. Uh, I could uh, sometimes. Sometimes I could not. Uh, like hopefully, like in Canada we will say no. Hopefully, not so good. I tablets. I should say that. <laughs> then my mom used to say, only only few days are there you you must take you must take like nearly one year i took the tablets uh you uh, monthly once uh, our doctor she should uh, like she used to check our weights one month how much uh, our weight has reduced uh, second month how much our weight has reduced uh, she used to say and um, like last 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 no like uh, when it's came to cure no she reduces uh, she has reduced our uh, medications also our doctor she has reduced our medication during this journey of yours did you ever feel that um had this product or service been there it would have made me feel so better uh any product or any service from pharmaceutical companies or any uh anything herbal products or anything from pharmacy that you could get and you could make yourself feel better is there anything like that yeah like patch sanitary patch no like my doctor she suggested uh, the organic patch for me uh, she suggested uh, like organic patch uh, they helped me through the journey these patches helped me through the journey nowadays they the heat patches and all came no for the uh, pain relief uh, at at my time it was not there <laughs> at my time it was not there <laughs> so i missed it <laughs> now i am using it like if i got the pain or sometimes uh, now i am using it heat patches and all now recently they have launched <laughs> would you like to share uh, how you used to feel earlier when uh, when you were going through all this were that was there any sort of uh, anxiety or uh... yeah i like I used to, I don't feel like going out only because uh, firstly, my body was overweight, okay? I could not face the uh, people. They would judge me so so badly. They would judge me like uh, I could not tolerate it. Uh, and uh, mainly I couldn't, I could not go outside because of my overweight. My last question for the day would be, in your journey, did you ever feel like there was a lack of awareness or lack of information for you? As a medical student, I am aware of uh, everything. Like uh, what is, uh, like uh, we could be knowing that what is PCOS. But also I cried then uh, you understand that I was afraid. Like as a human being, I'm afraid of that. Like it's a human mind that some if suddenly something hits no that it can't be taken so fastly uh, nothing i was aware of that yeah. uh, 
let me keep my video off to save the bandwidth. There is some issue of bandwidth at my end. The first question uh, to CG. Uh, uh, Sijit, uh, these ladies have been very bold and uh, one, one shared her video, another didn't share the video, but uh, she talked about her problem very candidly, trying not, not to hide many things, but we know much thing, many things would be hidden also here in the talks. It seems their heads are now lighter, they're, they're open and stress-free than before after they spoke. What do you think of this thing? Is there some some insight that you generate from just the look of it? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Swati. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, you know congratulate the Pharma State uh, team for such putting up such a wonderful program and all the audience also who have been patiently there and uh, listening to the esteemed speakers who have come. So congratulations to you because you are taking a step towards your uh, knowledge. Uh, and, you know, this would definitely help in your careers. Uh, so, Dr. Swati, uh, to the question that you asked, I think uh, it's a very, very important question. It might seem very simple that, you know, uh, when they have spoken, what, what happened to their state of mind, right? Uh, generally, when we look at patients, we don't come to the feelings of the patient. It's usually the symptoms that are spoken about. But uh, the second patient clearly elaborated that is beyond the symptom. I'm a human being. I have those uh, feelings which are there. You know, although the information was available to me, uh, the second patient uh, who was uh, a medical student, yet it hit her, right? When the diagnosis was shared with her. So I'm pretty sure that uh, this would have, um, this would have definitely um, helped. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's, it's just that, you know, not just speaking about the condition, you know, it's not easy, right? Because uh, they do have the fear of getting judged, uh, then the concerns with privacy. And, uh, you know, that most, many of the time it also happens that, and, and with women especially, that, you know, they are considered at fault for the condition. Yeah. Um, so, and these are some unsaid things that come up. And yet these women came forth and spoke. I think it's, it's amazing. It's really bold of them. Uh, while when it comes to the right platforms, it will definitely help others because um, other women need to hear this. Yeah, they need not suffer in silence because this is one of the common issues that are there. So if many more women come and speak uh, about their conditions, it will make it more acceptable, right? Uh, like if I look at PCOS as a condition, say 10 years back, it was not out in the open. You know, it was still like a hush hush thing. Oh, if I have PCOS, you know, there's a problem. But now it has come forth. You know, many women are accepting it and it's okay. Like, you know, many women have it. So it has become more like a acceptable condition. But there are so many other conditions where women don't know about it. Yeah. And they must be, they are suffering in silence. In fact, a lot of conditions like endometriosis, heavy menstrual bleeding, or maybe, you know, a lot of other hormonal issues or say infertility. So those, those issues are there. And once women speak about it, you know, it will become more acceptable. The treatment, since they would go to a doctor, diagnosis would become easier and the treatment also would be available with, to them. So kudos to these women who have actually come forth and spoken about their condition. Uh, thank you, Siji, for uh, uh, this insight. Um, as a woman, it, uh, I also feel that we generally do not talk about it. So where from where the insights would come? If we are not talking about it, who will talk for us, right? And uh, uh, how, how pharma can then help, uh, uh, or anyone can help for that matter, even a family member or a doctor. So uh, one, this 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 area seems to be very uh, uh, a good opportunity to me that a company has to raise these talks to a different level altogether, and uh, very openly consider uh, women reproductive health also as a part of discussions. Thank you, Siji. Uh, Zena, over to you for the next question. So I'll direct my next question to you, Mr. Shari. Uh, in the in the second video, you know, I think the point was brought out very clearly that how 
uh, when the girl was diagnosed with PCOS, the medical student, and the father shouted at her, kind of blaming her for the disease. But the mother stood with her. But one important point she raised was every time I felt like giving up, it was my mother who, you know, stood by me and said, "It's just some more time, you know, and you'll come out of it." Okay. Which I think really helped her, uh, you know, actually uh, manage the disease very well. So uh, the question that I would now like to pose is what uh, what role could pharma companies play in order to encourage or facilitate uh, the patients to talk openly about their problems to their caregivers, uh, mother, mother-in-law, and even husbands for that matter. So what could what could be the role of pharma here? Uh, thank you, Zini. Uh, first of all, happy Bihu, happy Pongal, happy Lori, and happy Makar Sankrant to one and all. And kudos to Pharma State team for such a wonderful uh, interaction and giving platform not only to the seniors of the pharma but also the youngsters, the think tankers who are coming into this profession and who are already been in this profession. So uh, best wishes to one and all. Uh, thank you so much, Zini, for asking this very relevant question. Uh, before coming to the answer, I would like to just share some prevalence about this disorder so that uh, the audience will be able to connect themselves uh, uh, related to your question. See, as we know, the PCOS relevant pre prevalence uh, in reproductive age of say 17 to 45, globally it is between 5.5% to 12.6%. Whereas in India, it's 8.2% to 22.5%. In short, you will be surprised that out of 10, every two female is suffering from syndromes of PCODs. Uh, it, it seems to be a very small number, uh, but when you uh, look into the realistic, uh, in an in a absolute number, it is almost 20% of uh, reproductive age group, which is uh, suffering from this disorder. And this is, uh, see, in last, as we see in last 10 years, definitely, uh, noise level for PCOS uh, syndromes have been raised. And we also came to know that this is uh, a disease which can, which any, any female can have. So we are having a lot of, uh, say, public figure who are also suffering or suffered from this disease, like whether it is uh, Victoria Beckham or Sonam Kapoor, Sara Ali Khan, Shruti Hassan or Masaba Gupta. So this is clear that this is no more a taboo, first of all. So this can happen too uh, because of some genetic and as well as for lifestyle disorder as well. And thus uh, the approach needs which pharma industry or pharma companies are moving is of 360 degree approach, which is creating a lot of awareness in a very sh small span of time. See, uh, if you look back after, in last one decade, there is a lot of awareness when it comes to asthma, anemia. And now PCOD is the third subject, which is having a lot of noise level all across uh, the country. And this, uh, as far as uh, the initiation, such initiating such discussion will definitely help for getting emotional support and acceptance from the families. And thus can build self-confidence as well to treat, uh, to get better treatment. See, when it comes to pharma companies, how they can, they can help uh, or or create some platform for the caregivers. In short, I can say that this is a journey where, oh no, say so na, oh wow, or uh, you can say, badai ho tak leke jane ka kaam karna. So as I was hearing your previous session when uh, loudly you said that I, I uh, diagnosed with diabetes two years back and uh, your family members were uh, asking that your life will change. Ho and you said, no, it will not change, it will be good. So this is all about confidence, what you have got from your even family members as well. So similar kind of uh, support everyone needs from the family. So when it comes to pharma companies are really creating a lot of awareness about this disease or syndrome, whether it is a local language or English and Hindi. Uh, awareness initiatives are not now limited only within the doctor chamber or hospitals. It is going beyond to the chemist pharmacy level as well, uh, more into digital platform, print media as well. And thus this multi-dimension approach of pharma or 360 degree approach of pharma uh, marketing is helping patients to discuss about their disorder with the caregivers. 
as such, uh, disease require both lifestyle modification as well as medicines. And thus it becomes very important uh, for a pharma company or marketers to have a consistent in their campaigns uh, that is creating, whether it is for awareness of do's and don'ts or food habits, weight management, uh, therapy compliances, monitoring of syndromes, and for all pharma companies can do uh, what uh, what majorly pharma companies are doing are of CMEs. Huh? So apart from CME for the doctor, a lot of things can be done for the patient or for the caregivers, huh? uh, like uh, engagement program at school level, making more awareness at the college level, uh, whether it is a male or female in that class. Huh? So it's not about that, that uh, caregiver should be only mother or sister or mother-in-law or even husband, what you have mentioned, should it can be brother as well, could be male friends as well, uh, father as well. So we need to create a lot of noise level from the pharma team, uh, especially at the school and college level. Then we can have a lot of engagements uh, of local public at public places, whether it is uh, malls, cinema halls, uh, corporate offices, which will help definitely, uh, we can help, uh, we can have some social influencer, what I have mentioned, few of the names or similar kind of personality to raise the voice. I was going through some blogs of Sonam Kapoor or uh, Masaba Gupta and I found they are very vocal when it comes to sharing their experience. And recently we all know that Sonam uh, gave a birth to baby boy, uh, despite of having PCODs in last eight years. So thus, uh, uh, I believe uh, to engage the caretaker of the family, to get the mental support, we can have a lot of engagement program, uh, same program for whether it is patient or for the caregivers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, answer. Uh, Sriji, do you want to add something to this? Uh yeah, I think Mr. Sharik has already uh, covered uh, the pointers very well. I'd like to just emphasize on one of the aspects since we are talking about patient centricity. Uh, and the emphasis here that I would like to give is that, uh, you know, while we, uh, you know, from the outside world might understand the disease, the doctors who know the symptoms and the caregivers would broadly know, you know, what it would be. Uh, but what is it from the eyes of the patient is, you know, what is critical here. And then uh, for each of these, you know, although there were two patients that, you know, we saw in the video, but did you notice both have PCOD? Yeah, uh, at least as of now, uh, what's coming out of it, but uh, their symptoms were so different. Yeah, so which means the needs are so different from each other, even if it is just one condition. So how do we bring out that aspect, you know, even as marketers, you know, the audience who's listening, uh, how are we able to listen to it? So it's beyond the terms or the you know diagnosis what is it exactly the patient is facing is 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 important for us as marketers to listen to and uh, the actions mr sharik has already mentioned you know maybe uh, going forth i'll also mention some of the other initiatives which can be taken, can be uh, you know put forth yeah i really like the one where he said you know public places malls etc where you know teenagers are frequenting adults are frequenting older ladies are so that's where you can get exposed to uh, some kind of a question which will probably drive you to your uh, doctor or to somebody to seek help saying i'm i'm suffering from this i mean if you could do that that kind of awareness i honestly think that would make a big difference to diagnosing the problem at least yes oh, but and uh, see, uh, actually this is sorry yeah. yeah, please, please continue. Actually, uh, if you see in a global market, a lot of such awareness uh, campaigns used to take place in uh, banks uh, where you are very attentive. Huh? And uh, also at uh, places like Big Bazaar or DMART so that uh, you are forced to hear that. Huh? Uh, so a lot of good things which can be come up with the new ideas. And which is actually uh, in, in other segments, what we have seen in since morning, whether it was asthma or uh, anemia or something, but uh, definitely this PCOD's awareness, I believe is the number third uh, rank awareness program all across India is going on. So uh, Shriji uh, would like to ask you a question that, you know, uh, could you share with the audience uh, what our pharma industry can do to help the caregivers at home 
who were close uh, to these ladies. So a little different from the question that I asked uh, Mr. Shari. Uh, one is about uh, you know supporting the patient. The other is also about supporting the caregiver because uh, dealing with a chronic uh, illness, dealing with PCOD, especially mood swings of the patient, uh, could be taxing for the caregiver as well. So where do you see the role of uh, pharma in this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Zena, for asking that question, because uh, it's important that we uh, look at the journey of the patient just beyond the patient herself, uh, or maybe, you know, in other diseases, uh, men, women, both, uh, but also who are involved, you know, who are the people who are involved in the entire journey along with the patient. So uh, definitely we can, uh, you know, play a role as uh, facilitators, uh, obviously, and uh, based on the scenario that the patient is going through, uh, the information that is provided to the caregivers also could vary. And as you rightly said, you know, the information to the caregivers also becomes so critical because uh, if the caregivers themselves are not able to be sensitive to, you know, what the patient is going through, then, uh, you know, it doesn't get resolved. Like I can give example of a couple of diseases like endometriosis where, uh, women go through pain like you know one of uh, the current patients also mentioned that she had she has pain during periods and two days she has to lay, take leave yeah sometimes what also happens is that in these conditions women uh, are misunderstood okay by the family members or even at the workplace that you know maybe so there's no problem that she has it's you know that she's just creating it because there's no condition that has been named for them or she's not been diagnosed with a certain disease yet so uh, how do we make them aware and be sensitive about the condition towards women is important. And you rightly uh, you know, took up the issue that it's not easy for the caregivers as well because um, they don't know what to expect, right? If, they don't, if the awareness is not there, they don't know what to expect. And therefore, how will they kind of uh, engage uh, with the women or you know, support the women? That also becomes important. So when a patient and the caregiver, caregivers also should go uh, to the doctor along with uh, the women and um, possibly also be able to ask questions to the doctor about the, about the condition or how they could support. Because I know currently the challenge is even about counseling the patient themselves. And here we are talking about, you know, also counseling, counseling the caregiver. The, the caregiver yes. but uh, you know maybe in the form of uh, information that can be provided uh, to the patients depending on the condition becomes critical mr sharik already mentioned that what are the ways it could be given and who are the caregivers to whom this information can be provided now uh, one emphasis that i'd like to give here is that this content that would be given to the patient should be co-created along with the patient because uh, the patient, what the patient is beyond the symptoms, right? It's not just pain or acne or you know excessive hair growth. It's beyond that. The emotions that are involved in the entire thing, the psychological impact that is happening on the women. So how do they? How how do the you know caregivers uh, support these women? Uh, you know, if those information can be uh, provided uh, to be like how the caregivers can be more sensitive how, uh, you know, where to find the right information, that also becomes important. And also uh, familiarize them, you know, that the support is beyond the, just the physical support or financial support. It is the psychological support and the emotional support that would be uh, required to be given to the patient. So equipping the caregivers, we as pharma industry can familiar, uh, you know, kind of facilitate it. Uh, although we may not be able to play a very direct role, but giving content to the doctors uh, or in the media, if some information can be provided, that would be really helpful uh, in the patient journey uh, when, when it comes to patient centricity. Great. So two, two words have really stuck from your answer, Shri. One is that pharma can be a facilitator to this. And that's where uh, there is a huge, I believe there's an open space there. You know? bola, there is a challenge to educate patients now. And we are talking of educating the caregivers. Uh, but both these are possible. Both these uh, tasks are daunting, but possible. And this is where I believe there's a huge open space for pharma, pharma marketers to, you know, really make the most of. Very true, Sarah. So, uh, uh, Mr. Sharik, uh, you know, we have, we have talked about this a couple of days back also, that there are hardly any pharma support groups for such patients, you know. 
so uh, could you let the audience know your thoughts of initiating such groups either for patients or caregivers you know where pharma could really play the role of a facilitator as shuji said in her earlier answer uh, see uh, as mentioned by ms cg in the earlier two questions uh, when she correlated with the patient one with video and one with without video so one is comfortable and still yet vocal and other was not comfortable but was very open to discuss her uh, views and uh, problems what she has faced in the journey and what is her her expectation from us so when it comes to any kind of certain group yes definitely there are hardly any pharma support initiative groups uh, uh, there are a lot of other things which pharma are doing but when it, when it comes to gynae yes there are definitely there are a very less number of initiatives which we had seen into gynae uh see let's see this into the different form uh, i i i went to buy a car last year and the moment i stepped into uh, the showroom he said ki sir aap hamara group pehle join kar lijiye so i said what is this group so he gave me four links two of uh, social media one of whatsapp so what is this so one was official by the company and three were made by the different people and let me tell you within 6 days i was so much into that group i was interacting with the the different owners all across the india and outside india to understand about that car so definitely when it comes to making some initiative which is relevant to the patient will definitely because i was also patient that time i i went to cure myself because i i want to buy a car so as a patient i stepped into the showroom and he asked sir will i have एक ग्रुप आपको ज्वाइन करना है तो आई गॉट सरप्राइज के बता रहे हो हाउ इंटरेक्टिव दे now coming back to uh, okay, how this pharma company can help see uh, if you ask me more and more initiative need to come into existence whether it is through whatsapp facebook instagram youtube videos uh, applications app uh, online webinars where pharma companies can definitely have uh, uh, more of uh, supportive groups they can create before calling them to certain platform Uh, and then a need base you can say 24/7 assistance uh, for the patient so that they can ask their queries ke okay, main individually aapse baat kar sakta hu can i i can i i am not comfortable in talking in the group but can i come back to you over the phone and uh, to the authorities of pharma where doctors or uh, good advisors will be placed off but getting before getting into this the young market is need to understand that yes uh, the pharma industry is witnessing a massive revamp traditionally if you say that we are very slow in adoption of technology but the industry is now undergoing a rapid change due to development of several technologies or innovations uh, so out of so many top 10 if you see there are the two very important when it comes to gynae or definitely one is artificial intelligence and second one which is coming up very well is real world data Uh, we also call it as a real world evidence as well uh, these are the transforming innovations in the pharmaceutical industry whether it is rwd which includes patient health status treatment data health reports and collectively collected throughout the routine and the availability of this uh, rwd is definitely through internet sensors variables Uh, and uh, restructuring the way the pharma industry is functioning now these days so helping patient building therapy adherence should be the top priority when it comes to uh, creating any such kind of platform okay, at the end of the day what is required that the patient should adhere to the therapy whether it is a lifestyle modification or the medicine it's not only that a general awareness need to be get uh, uh, injected all the time through your uh, platforms in facebook or linkedin or through websites or any other apps what more important is the end result so we need to uh, as stephen cover say that begin by keeping end in the mind so the end should be that the patient should get benefit out of all these things and providing uh, guidance in in sort of emergencies and orders and the way the patient the second patient was asking uh, sharing in the video 
that she was too much worried 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 she used almost three times whereas the first patient uh, if you see this at seven minute video again you will be surprised that she was uh, concerned about the weight gain and she talk about at least 10 times about the gaining of the weight gaining of the weight so that psychology because uh, her mother was obese and there is a, some uh, uh, someone else in the family were obese and she was very much concerned that maybe she will obese. Ho so different patient need a different kind of uh, approach to be handled when it comes to uh, forming any certain kind of uh, guidelines. I I uh, am I'm happy to say that uh, there are a good number of companies who are doing this now uh, when it comes to endometriosis, what uh, Ms. Uh, Nair was saying or uh, saying or even in, comes, in terms of PC, uh, in PCOS as well. Uh, and we had seen that uh, after a year when we analyzed uh, how many patients hit that platform, you won't be able to imagine the numbers. You start with one education video, send, put some link on the it where the patient can reach out to you anytime a single one informative video, you can reach up to 9,000 subjects or patient in a year, which is, let me tell you, which is phenomenal. If you can create certain 10 videos or 10 different uh, way to uh, communicate to the patient or through the group, in a year, you can engage 1 lakh patient. And it's a phenomenal number. Huh? And good number of companies are putting their lot of uh, efforts um, by using this RWD into it and involving patient in product design as well. Because it's not about only the engaging or grouping the patient. It's all about engaging those subjects and patient uh, for product design and research as well. See, uh, both of, out of these two videos, one 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 patient was doctor, huh? Yeah, medical student. Medical student, yeah. Medical, sorry, medical student. And she was not comfortable in sharing the video. That is her personal choice. But let engage all such kind of patient for research and product design. Because uh, a patient said how it can be different from pill. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I was coming to that question, <laughs> Mr. Shari. Uh, okay, we'll, 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 we'll address this. We'll address <laughs> this. This is very interesting. So, oh, patient had a lot of good insights. Diyate. Please go on, Shari. I'll ask yeah, the so that's, that, that's Dr. Swati is very much important while creating a group. Group is not about only a WhatsApp group or a bot. Huh? So, uh, abhi a group hum bolte to sabse pehle dhyan aata ke group banana hai WhatsApp. So, it's not about only WhatsApp. Ecosystem. Ke bahar, ecosystem. Ecosystem. Right, right. Think. Right, right. Eco, ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, for all this, we have to ensure that the putting data analytic to use should be used very judiciously. Very judiciously. Whether it is a thin lean, adolescence PCODs or obese PCOs, or, or a female who is struggling to get con conceived after marriage. So there are different sort uh, category of patient within this PCOS. And to cater their need, one drug or one approach or one campaign will not be able to suffice our requirement. So this is all about how we can create a differentiation from the marketing point of view. Thank you. I'm tempted to interrupt here. Swati, yes, yes, but uh, Sharik has talked about a very favorite subject of mine, and that is cooperating with the patient to design a product. And my favorite subject today has always been design thinking. Thank you for uh, touching on this point. Three cheers to you for this. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Yes, yes, Vivekse, and in videos, uh, CG and Sharik, I, I, I noted down when I uh, saw those videos, some, some very... Uh, very minute details that were coming out. In one of the videos, um, uh, she cried a lot because she has this uh, mentality that why I got it. That, that that needs to be normalized. That disease is a part of your life. You may be healthy. There are very um, there are people who are uh, healthy throughout their hundred years, but you will get something uh, one uh, now and then. So there she was crying. Then there is also a Ayurvedic doctor means the person switches from one therapy line to another therapy line. Father always scolding, doctor supporting. So this is a journey that I saw in one of the videos. The other was she talked about nurses not good. When she went to the hospital, she's saying that nurses were like um, uh, blaming her or talking about her 
that 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 is very important touch point it it may lead her to go back to home from that special incidents only where uh, the awareness has to be there the the nurses have to be trained on not uh, that this is normal this is not an abnormal case of some uh, a difference then embarrassing about embarrassed about ultrasound uh, so that is again one thing one insight that is coming that how to normalize these sort of uh, mm, social uh, mindsets that we have gotten into and then uh, genetics hair growth obesity mood swing and the last point was the packaging uh, shariksa i need you to emphasize here what what she meant was uh, from that comment that uh, just package it differently from you are packaging it from contraceptives yeah, it's contraceptive true uh, so i will take the last one uh, dr swati uh, see uh, for the patient when they visit doctor they do lot of research whether it is through google or through friends or through other sources as well and the second uh, step after meeting the customer doctor they go to the chemist and chemist ke yahan na bahut sari cheeze jo hai which is uh, which needs lot of improvement in the indian uh, society as well because they are the second doctor now these days huh? let me be very honest so how the differentiation started ke wo contraceptive pill hai kya because endometriosis she was referring because of endometriosis in the treatment of endometriosis sometimes pill uh, contraceptive pill is also been used so how you can differentiate the therapy within this gynae challenges whether it is a pcos or endometriosis it could be in form of oral solids to sachet it could be because she is a working woman you can you can give uh, rather than giving them pill you can give them some uh, dispersible tablets as well uh, so that in public place also they will not hesitate what they will open up and they will just chew it so there are good number of brands who are chewable now in this segments or also coming up with uh, sachet forms uh, and different forms as well so packaging means it doesn't look like that uh, he uh, she is taking a medicine proper medicine and she wants a water and she need to open up so that wo jo हम बोलते हैं ना कि आसपास वाले पीपल विल आस्क अरे क्यों ले रहे हो ये पिल है क्या सो दैट थिंग वी कैन वी कैन डेफिनेटली एज एज अ फार्मा कंपनी वी कैन कम अप विद मोर रिसर्च एंड पैकेजिंग पार्ट एज वेल ऑनेस्टली इफ यू आस्क मी इफ यू सी द टोटल मार्केट दिस मार्केट सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ मार्केट कम्स फ्रॉम न्यूट्रासोटिकल एंड थर्टी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट मार्केट कम्स फ्रॉम ड्रग्स so when it comes to drug uh, policies you cannot uh, play with them but yes definitely when it comes to fasci or nutraceutical you can make it more lucrative for the patient whether it is a color font or uh, fragrance or some flavor can be put on it uh, and let me uh, because since i am into gynae since last now more than 20 years we understand when we talk to the patient uh, doctor first thing they ask what is the size of your medicine or tablet and what is the color so right from the packaging color size uh, whether it is a capsule so there should be no bulging effect for the patient so there are so many things which need to be considered before getting into the market and i believe uh, the youngsters who are join who are present in this uh, forum right now or who will see this recording later on they will definitely going to uh, do some research before getting into the finalization of uh, communication and product designing as well and that is the reason why what dr uh, why, uh, professor uh, vivek was also watching so we need to engage patients more when it comes to designing the product uh, i was fortunate uh, when we have uh, launched the first time in into india a treatment into pcos with uh, myanestetol and uh, after getting into the market the first thing which came ki, can you make it chewable for our patient we said yes let let us try we did almost a hard work of 14 months and we got that molecule into chewable form uh, and it was a blockbuster let me tell you once you go out of the box when when it come to gynae treatment especially or pediatrics it's very well accepted it's very well accepted by the consultant as well so uh, dr swati good things are going on when it comes to research and development and i'm pretty sure when it comes to such challenges of endometriosis or even uh, pcos uh, in coming days uh, the compliance part will be better in fact i still remember many years back sharik had launched a very beautiful product and it was named after a color 
and that pink color name yeah. my god what a fantastic yeah. uh, market share it took from the brand you know i mean the, uh, that time i never realized a brand name can have such an impact on the doctors to prescribe the products that i think again through research yes that came through research only yeah true my god Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank Mr. Sharik. Uh, Siji, would you like to add something to whatever yeah. insights were there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think very, very good insights from uh, Mr. Sharik on the uh, product variability that can be done or innovation that can be done to address the needs of the patient. At the same time, I'd like to add here a counterpoint uh, rather that, you know, why should a contraceptive pill be uh, stigmatized okay why isn't it okay for a woman to have a contraceptive pill let's look at it the other way around as well because uh, even for contraception the pill is helpful and even for a lot of other conditions so in india if you really see around 75 percent of the usage of a contraceptive pill is for the other conditions like you know heavy menstrual bleeding for pcod for endometriosis or you know infertility so uh, along with that you know it would offer contraception but you know why stigmatize contraception pill right so if that awareness also can bring in you know let it be like a normal thing where uh, women are okay to take any type of type of medication that are being given to them like if you remember uh, for those who were in the diabetes industry since long insulin was not considered really a good thing right when uh, you know somebody had to take it in public but now it's normal so similarly, uh, the medication, not just in the gynec, but, you know, even in the other uh, therapies, you know, why should it be stigmatized? Yeah, so if that also can come out, you know, that would really help uh, women, uh, patients in terms of adherence. Completely second uh, this point, Siji. Uh, we have uh, created a mindset in the society which needs to be changed completely from the the way we are currently perceiving uh, uh, women problems or contraception, marriage, pregnancy, birth, anything for that matter. So that, that needs to be very uh, vehemently put in the society. Uh, right? We are 50% of the society. <laughs> so, <laughs> More than 50. Yeah? Uh, the ratio is uh, 1068 against 1000. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Sharik, sir. So we are majority. We have to do that. And, and um, please remember, uh, sometimes uh, when it comes to, uh, this is especially for the young marketers, please remember one uh, serial name, because <laughs> target the audience now, because they are, they are going to be a caretaker for tomorrow. Huh? Wow. <laughs> if, if you, uh, think, think from the uh, that prospect as well, while designing your campaigns or brand, target now, because <laughs> you a caretaker so she, the patient was very uh, to the point that she was not happy with sonography. Sonography kab hoti hai? because when you are having uh, some uh, disorder relate uh, disorder or during pregnancy. Uh, so she was ke agar main sonography karne jaungi, char log dekhenge bolenge ke sonography. So that was that was a hitting point, huh? and that really need to uh, uh, stakeholder need to take it very. Uh, smartly how we can come up and how we can reduce the usage of sonography when it comes to uh, treatment or monitoring of PCODs or endometriosis. Agree. Uh, yeah. Sharik, I feel both, both issues are really very prevalent. One is going for a sonography at a very young age, especially yes. unmarried women. And the second is yeah. buying contraceptives from a chemist. Again, for an unmarried Honest. woman, that's a big challenge. You know? Why yes. are you buying this? You know? True, true. In ultrasound, she was also talking about the process, the, the way it is done. So I think she, that that part is again a different sort of medical issue where the, the diagnostics are still like not uh, seen in the right uh, uh, eye. Sorry, the let's, eye. let's talk about this because there are a different kind of sonography. I believe that patient was not comfortable with TVS, transvaginal sonography. Maybe, maybe Sharik sir, okay, we are so not that, Yeah. Yeah. So it's not about only sonography, it, uh, it might be TVS. Yeah. Uh, Zena, I think uh, it's time that you have to ask the last question to the panel and then we move towards the next panel. Uh, wonderful Great. insights till now. Yeah. Great. So one last question before we wrap this up. Uh, how important uh, do you think it is to identify patient journey and how can marketers, pharma company play a key role for better outcomes, uh, not only for patients, but also for doctors? 
So can I take this? Sure. Yes, please. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so I think this is a very very important point that you know we all as marketers uh, or whoever is dealing with uh, the health of a patient uh, needs to know because. Uh, as with these two examples also it was so evident that these are patients of pcos however their journeys have been so different their needs have been so different and even even going further this is going to evolve because a lot of conditions that we have that women or you know people have to face a lifelong condition it's not like acute condition so the the journeys are going to evolve from time to time so like you know at, at say for pcos at adolescent if the uh, if the person is diagnosed or she has a pcos you know after say 10 years you know when it becomes a child bearing age uh, the need would be different you know then the condition that she would face might be very different from what she faced 10 years back it could be infertility or maybe something else and going beyond that you know see after 10 15 years it would be a different condition or a different need Uh, or challenge that she might have to have to face even though you know the overlying condition is pcos so how do we understand that you know what are the moments or what are the uh, points that matter to the women at that point in time becomes important and how are the stakeholders like the doctors who are around the caregivers who are around will have to adapt to the requirement of the women or that condition becomes very very critical so now this is more from the patient and the caregiver perspective as marketers also we need to understand that you know the need of a patient will differ or the challenge of the patient would differ the adherence challenge at that point in time would differ for a adolescent as vis-a-vis a woman who is in her 30 30 35 yeah uh, so in adolescent you know maybe the parents also will become a stakeholder there at 35 at 30 25 30 the woman herself might be empowered enough to uh, take the decisions or maybe she would have a partner who is helping her so so all those conditions become very very important for the marketer to understand and therefore build in the brand plans accordingly yeah what are the materials that would be made available to the patient to the doctors you know for better counseling to the caregivers for better understanding the condition at that point in time becomes very very uh, critical so one input will not serve everyone okay one educational material will not serve everyone at different point in time different things should be made available to the patients and this can be facilitated very well facilitated by the uh, pharma industry because uh, for the doctor as we as we saw even in the previous discussions that you know counseling is a challenge dr bansi sabu uh, already mentioned that you know there's only a limited time that's available for counseling what all things would the doctor counsel at that point in time so if the entire experience of the patient needs to be taken care of you know what are the tools that can be supported to the doctor then the doctor also understands that you know as a company you are trying to help the practice of the doctor in terms of retaining the patient for a longer period of time one of the patient mentioned that you know she went she, she switched doctors right so how long can uh, we help the patient to remain with that particular doctor this would be really helpful and therefore what what is happening here is that you building the image of the brand you building the image of the company and also supporting the patients in the long run it's just beyond the product right because uh, if the patient is happy if the doctor is happy if the caregivers know what to do the your product will will be used yeah the doctors would recommend your product because it's offering much more than just the science uh, or the efficacy that it offers which was discussed in the previous discussion so i think it's very very critical and i think i can't emphasize more that uh, marketers should understand this point and incorporate it in the plan that they would design wonderful siji means you you actually thought about the patient journey and uh, taught, uh, taught the audience that how they should be designing uh, thinking including design thinking and then doing the process awesome thank you thank you so much siji and uh, mr sharik uh, vivek sir zena yeah, you but, want uh, to add sir before we conclude i just want to add uh, one point if uh, all of you permit uh, this was more like a informal fire sack a fireside chat and i really enjoyed it much i really enjoyed it very much but i can say this would not have been possible without our young interviewers the yeah, way the true. confidence they showed when 
asking the questions and uh, they were able to bring out the inner feelings of the patients and i tell you the job they have done is fantastic especially considering these little girls yes i call them little girls because they are one third my age they are literally one third my age and i want to salute the interviewers for bringing out the emotions on a subject which is so sensitive which otherwise they would not have been able to bring out thank you swati thank you vivek thank sir thank you everyone thank you and, one uh, and all Uh, thank you, Mr. Shari. Thank you, Mr. Ji, for being you. with us and uh, doing the inciting for all of us present here.